Thank you, Council. That in August of 1994, there was another occasion when you came over Miss Ra Miss Randa's house unannounced with alcohol on your breath. No, that's not true. It is true, is it not, that when you are under the influence of alcohol, your perception is altered. Yeah, most people. I would that say. your ability to recall facts and events is affected. If you're drunk. I was drunk the night when I went over to Kathy's house. The one in the morning. I was. Answer the question. Thank you, sir. Now let's talk about your career as a police officer. You testified that there were occasions when you would come by and speak with Mr. Simpson. True? Yes, there were. And you would come by his home while working for the Los Angeles Police Department. Yes, I did. And you'd come by in uniform. Yes, I was. In marked cars. Marked cars? Correct. Oh, marked black and whites. I'm correct. sorry. Yeah, that's correct. And you would come by and basically show off your friendship to a Hall of Famer. True? What I would do, I mean, yeah, that's true. And you would try to impress your friends on the force that you knew O.J. Simpson and could come by his house. True? Get autographs, pictures. And you would often take your partners into Mr. Simpson's house to show off his Heisman Trophy that is displayed there, sure wouldn't you? Yes, I did. And you'd also take him to his magnificent trophy room and show all of those championship footballs that he had on display. I did. And you would also show off the Walter Camp trophies and the other trophies that were prominently displayed in his trophy room, wouldn't you? All the trophies, everything he had there. And in fact, you would even go back, and you went back last year to have Mr. Simpson sign footballs for some friends of yours. Yes, sure. I did. You said that there may have been as many as 40 different officers that on one time or another you brought to Mr. Simpson's home, correct? Over a five-year period, okay. correct. How many times did you bring Mark Furman by? Mark Furman? Yeah. <laughs> Never. It was well known at the West Los Angeles Division when you were there. Well, let's hear the question. Thank you. Because you brought so many police officers by Mr. Simpson's home to show off Mr. Simpson and his trophies, et cetera, it was well known, wasn't it, at West Los Angeles that O.J. Simpson lived within the jurisdiction of that division? Very much. Okay. Now, you left the police force in October of 1989, didn't you? That's correct. And when you left, you had plans to further your acting career, didn't you? Well, I left, to be perfectly honest, and my wife had verified this and my family, I was burned out. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do, but I just, I left the job because I was burned out. Didn't you leave voluntarily? Oh, yes, I did. Okay. And didn't you have conversations after you left with Mr. Simpson with perhaps using Mr. Simpson's influence to kick off your acting career? Can I answer this fully? Can you answer it yes or no? No. Okay. At about the time that you left the police department, Mr. Simpson was a producer of a TV series, wasn't he? When I left the police department? Correct. I'm not sure if it was canceled by then or not. First and Ten was the series, was it not? Yeah, he did have a series. And in fact, Mr. Simpson was able to get you small roles on that series, wasn't he? One role. Okay. And you had wanted to try to obtain more and larger roles, didn't you? It's not true. Okay. Isn't it true, sir, that when your acting career floundered, you reapplied to work again with the police department, even though you had been so burned out, as you say? I. Uh, I did, okay, what happened was when things, I started a security Question. business, things didn't work out, okay, things Can didn't work this. out. It is true, even though you were so burned out with the police department that you reapplied, correct? Yes, I did reapply. When was that? 
probably about a year afterwards. Are you sure it was that long? I can't remember. You have the dates. I'm sure, sure I do. Wasn't it more like four months? No, it wasn't four months that I recall. And isn't no. it true that even though you wanted to be, again, a member of the police department, they didn't accept you, correct? This is true. And isn't it true that they didn't accept you because of a substance abuse, abuse problem that you had? No, not at all. That's not true. Why were you told that you weren't accepted? Because when I, um, during my, during the time when I had the alcohol problem, I took stress leave and I was told by the city attorney's office that it would be, I'd be at very high risk to come back to the LAPD. So they thought that you'd be unfit as an officer? Because of the, yeah, for the stress. Let's turn our focus to a discussion of your conversations with the Simpson family in 1989. You mentioned that there was a time after the incident when you spoke to Mr. O.J. Simpson, correct? Yes, correct. And it's true, is it not, that O.J. took full responsibility for the problems that had occurred in 89 with his wife? Um, at one point, yeah, he did. He changed his mind the next day, but at one point he did. Well, one more time. And other than withdrawn. Mr. Simpson spoke to you about how he wanted to publicly confess or publicly make a statement about the errors of his ways in 89. True? Yes, he did. Now, you were able to personally relate when he accepted responsibility for the incident in 89 because of your own problems, true? Which problems? Okay. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes, please, let's go for
the course of your conversation with Mr. Simpson, you recommended that Mr. Simpson see a particular psychiatrist, didn't you? I sure did. And that was a psychiatrist with whom you had personal information about, true? That's correct. And that was a psychiatrist with whom you yourself were treating, true? Yes, that's true. And Mr. Simpson attended his counseling sessions as far as you knew, true? As far as I knew. And as you would look back on Mr. Simpson's marriage with Nicole Brown Simpson, you would interpret that as being a good relationship, wouldn't you? Totally. What I knew. In the past, you're talking about before 1989? Well, in 1984, when you were giving a statement about Mr. Simpson's relationship with his wife <coughs> while they were married, you described it as being a great relationship, a great marriage, didn't you? That's correct, yeah. Okay. That I knew, yeah. Now, we talked briefly yesterday about an occasion in June of 94 when you visited Mr. Simpson unannounced asking to use a jacuzzi with a friend. Recall that? I did. That's totally false. Totally false. Okay. There was an occasion when you came with a friend and asked to use Mr. Simpson's jacuzzi, correct? Mr. Douglas, I hope you get your facts straight, okay? Can you answer my question? You're I, was I went to okay. play tennis, Mr. Douglas. I was playing tennis. Do you After the tennis hold game, hold on, hold on. You, you're Ship. attacking me. Let me ask you a question. Hold on, Mr. Ship. Juries to disregard the last comments both by Mr. Ship and by Mr. Douglas. Mr. Douglas, ask your question. Thank you. Don't you recall an occasion when you called Mr. Simpson at about 10 o'clock in the evening and asked to use the jacuzzi? Do you recall that, sir? Yes or no? No. Okay. Do you recall after he let you use the jacuzzi that about 20 minutes later you called back? and asked him to bring you a bottle of wine. You do you recall that, sir? 10 o'clock at night. Didn't you say 10 o'clock at night? I'm asking, do you recall when you called him back to ask to, to, to bring a bottle of wine down to you in the jacuzzi? Do you recall that? Can I have the times clarified, sir? 1994, June, if not May. Well, June, I'm talking about the time, not the day, the time. It was in the evening, Mr. Ship. Do you recall that occurring? I, I do recall that. OK. You were with a friend other than your wife, were you not? Yes, I was. She was blonde, was she not? Who was a friend of my wife's, that's correct. And you say her name is what? Lisa Madigan. Okay. Do you know someone by the name of Angela Spilker? Angela Spilker. Yes. I can't, I can't recall. You have worked in other jobs as an investigator, have you not? Yes, I have. And you have done investigative work for friends of Mr. Simpson's, have you not? Yes, I have. And there was an occasion when you were asked to look into the background of Angela. Oh, Angela. Spilker. Yeah, I do remember that. Oh. You're correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Of and Tom McCullen. Angela is a German woman, isn't she? That's correct. And she's about six foot one, isn't she? I've never met the woman, but uh, I s actually, no, I did. She was in a car. And I served her, I think. So you did meet her, right? Yeah, I and she's I did. And she's a tall blonde, isn't she? She was in the car. I saw her for about 10 seconds. And the only time that you've ever seen her was for those 10 seconds? Yes, that's correct. And Ms. Spilker was not the person who was with you on this occasion when you asked for the bottle of wine? <laughs> no. I just gave you her name. Now let's talk about this alleged conversation that you had with Mr. Simpson on the 13th. What time do you recall that you and he had this alleged conversation about the dream? What time of the evening was it? I think it was maybe close. I, I remember like 11 o'clock, somewhere around there. Do you recall telling Ms. Weller that this conversation that you had was shortly past midnight on the 13th? It, it could have been. That whole week kind of ran together. Do you need to see something to refresh your recollection, sir? Well, yeah, if you have it. the occasion when you and Miss Madigan were in the jacuzzi. You saw Mr. Simpson's daughter, Arnell, while you and she were in the jacuzzi. That's correct. True. Okay. And it was in June, wasn't it? It was in June. Okay. I was disputing the time, not disputing the day. 
And I just wanted to refresh your recollection with a copy of Exhibit D-1000. And I just want you to read to yourself the person that I'm referring to, beginning on the bottom of page 8. Okay. After having read Exhibit 1000, is your memory now refreshed that it was just after midnight when you and Mr. Simpson supposedly went up to his bedroom? I really don't think it was that late because I, I remember getting home roughly around 12.30, somewhere around there. Well, do you remember that when you had an occasion to read the draft of Miss Weller's book, that the book had said, just after midnight? Do you remember reading that? I, I think, yeah, I think I pretty and much And you did. do remember that, as you said yesterday, the draft of the book was correct. True? True. And it is true, is it not, that your memory of these events was fresher during your conversation with Miss Weller in July or August than it is today? That's, I'd say you're probably correct. Because your memory doesn't improve over time, does it? No, it does not. So if Ms. Weller says that it was just after midnight, that's probably a better reflection of the time frame. Well, like I said, I'm still thinking, I'm thinking about when I got home. I'm saying I got home around 12.30. It takes me 45 minutes, almost an hour to get home. Now, after you and Mr. Simpson were upstairs, according to your version of this, Mr. Simpson began asking you a series of questions, you say. Is that correct? That's correct. Did you say, or is it your testimony that Mr. Simpson asked you about withdrawn? Is it your testimony that Mr. Simpson said that the police had told him about a bloody glove? Could you repeat that again? Please? Sure. Did Mr. Simpson tell you that the police had told Simpson about a bloody glove? That's correct. And did Simpson tell you that the police had told Simpson about some cap that was found? That's correct. Did you know that during the entire time that Mr. Simpson was in the custody of the police officers on that day, Objection. that they never the mentioned anything evidence, about a bloody glove? Was fact not in evidence. The counsel was attempting to testify. Mr. Simpson was not in custody. I can link it up, Your Honor, at the appropriate time. I'm going to sustain the objection to the form of the question as being compound Very well. at this point. Because it's compound. Compound. It may also assume a fact that's not in evidence. There's, there's, when you use the term custody, that's a very fine term in our terminology here. Your Honor, I just need to know the ruling so that I can change the question accordingly. Rephrase compound, the question. I will rephrase it. Certainly. Rephrase the question. Certainly. Did you know that nothing about a bloody glove was ever mentioned to Mr. Simpson by the police on June 13th? Objection, Your Honor. This witness is not competent to testify to a conversation of Overruled. That's a speaking objection, counsel. You may answer. I have no idea what the police had said they found. I'm just going by what O.J. mentioned to me. So you didn't know that? I have no idea what they found. And you didn't know that nothing about any cap being recovered was ever mentioned to I Mr. Simpson? I have no idea. Okay. If you knew that nothing about a bloody glove was ever mentioned to Mr. Simpson on the 13th by the police, would that cause you to maybe rethink your version of this conversation? Not one, not, no, I know what I heard, no. No okay. way. Now, this alleged statement about a dream, you were asked about yesterday, weren't you? Yes, I was. And you were asked yesterday whether Mr. Simpson allegedly made some statement about DNA coming back. True? True. And you were asked yesterday what Mr. Simpson said in response to your indication that it takes DNA two months to come back. Correct? Correct. And you responded that he kind of jokingly just said, you know, to be honest, Ship, I've had some dreams of killing her. That's what you said yesterday. True? That's very true. Isn't it more accurate, Mr. Ship, that Mr. Simpson never supposedly said anything about dreams in response to this question about DNA? True? Can you repeat that question? Sure. 
there was some other portion of a conversation that we're not going to go, go, go into that came between the statement about DNA that you had said and the statement that, that you say Mr. Simpson said about the dream. Isn't that correct? Can you answer that yes or no? You can answer that yes or no. That other statement you're talking about came first, if I'm not mistaken. Before the DNA statement? If I'm not mistaken. Well. I think that may have come first. Do you, would you like to refresh your recollection as to the order of the conversation by reviewing again the statements attributable to you in Ms. Weller's book? simply to read it to himself so I can ask my next series of questions. Yes. Okay. Sorry, did... it, after having reviewed the okay. excerpt from this book, is your recollection now refreshed? Okay, it's refreshed. That's correct. And it's true, is it not, that even according to your version, this alleged statement about the dreams did not directly come in response to the alleged statement about DNA, correct? That's correct. There was something else that we're not going into that came between the two. That's correct. And when you responded and characterized Mr. Simpson's alleged statement about the dreams, you said that the statement was made jokingly, didn't you? That's true. Tell me everything that you saw that gave you an indication that the, statement, the alleged statement was made jokingly. Well, he just kind of said, you know, to be truthful, Ship, <laughs> I've had dreams of killing her. Kinda so he like, kind of chuckled. Kind of chuckled, yeah. Mr. Ship, when were you first informed by anyone representing the prosecution in this case, that you would be called as a witness to testify in this matter? Uh, whenever uh, Phil Van Adder um, I think it's probably the second time he visited my house, he said I possibly may be called. He didn't say I was actually going to be called. And give me your best estimate of when it was that Phil Van Adder visited your house the second time. Can you refresh my memory or someone as to when, um, <coughs> as to when I met with Marsha and uh, Mr. Darden? I think you met with Marsha the first time in July. July? Of 94. Okay, it was probably maybe about two or three weeks after that. So, two or three weeks after meeting with Marsha, Phil told you that you would probably be a witness in the case. Yes, he did. And did you then tell Phil, knowing that, that you'd be a witness in the case, about this conversation concerning the dream that supposedly occurred? Oh, no, I didn't. How many times after the first time that you met in Marsha's office did you have a conversation with anyone from the, from the prosecution team? I think I may have had s several conversations, maybe two, three, maybe with Patty Fairbanks. How many other conversations did you have with Phil Van Adder other than on the day when your statement was recorded? Repeat that question. How many conversations did you have with Phil Van Adder other than the day when your statement was recorded, transcribed? One, maybe two. And they were both at your home? Uh, one was um, at my home, and I think one other time I, I just called to ask him some kind of question. Did you just say a minute ago that 
Phil told you that you may be a witness the second time that he came to your home? That's correct. When was the first time? The first time he came to my home? Yes. The first time he came to my home was when he brought a subpoena for the grand jury. Okay. Um, you did testify under oath in a grand jury proceeding. That's correct. When you testified at the... Yes, with the court report, please.
All right, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to take a uh, brief 15-minute recess at this time. Please remember my admonition to you. Don't discuss the case amongst yourselves for many opinions or allow anybody to talk to you about the case. I'm going to ask you to step back into the jury room, please. All right, Mr. Ship, you can step down. Let's have it quiet in the courtroom, please. We're still in session. Changing paper. Yes. All right, let the record reflect the uh, jury has withdrawn from the courtroom. Mr. Shapiro, good morning. Yes, Your Honor. While uh, you were uh, directing your attention to counsel at sidebar, I was conferring with uh, Mr. Simpson, and Mr. Shipp uh, continually was staring at us, was mouthing some type of word. Uh, in, a, in some type of attempt to either communicate with me or with Mr. Simpson, uh, was making very unusual facial expressions uh, that would go from a grimace to a, snirk, to a uh, smirk. And uh, it was in front of the jury, and I found, it, uh, I found it myself to be very, very uncomfortable, and I tried to direct my attention away from him. And I wanted to uh, call that to the court's attention. All right. Ms. Uh, Lewis, you had a comment? Your Honor, I have been sitting at the back of the courtroom in the smaller council table during the time that Mr. Shipp was uh, waiting for the sidebar conference to finish. And what I saw was a witness who didn't know where to look. He didn't want to sit there and stare at the jury. He could not stare at the audience. So he was looking around, to, as is typical of a witness when the attorneys are at sidebar. I didn't see him make any unusual expressions other than those typical and consistent of a, with a witness who is just trying to determine what to do while the attorneys are at sidebar. All right. Well, if we have any luck, maybe Court TV has the uh, had the focus on uh, Mr. Ship during that course. We'll see. All right. Let's take a 15-minute recess. All right, well, you know I very much appreciate your uh, other obligations. All right, counsel, before we resume, uh, I've been advised by uh, members of my staff that they did, in fact, observe uh, Mr. Ship during the course of uh, the uh, sidebar conference make some gesture or attempt to communicate with the defendant. And when the jury comes out, I'm going to order them to disregard uh, that. I asked Mr. Ship during the break if he uh, mouthed something to uh, to the defendant while we were at sidebar, and he told me that yes, in fact, he did. And uh, I intend to ask him on redirect what it was, since it was done in the presence of the jury. Uh, we 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 would like to, I'd like to ask the excuse me. The jury saw it. I'd like to know what it is he said to him. I'd like him to know what it is he said to him. I don't think that's proper, Your Honor. That's not evidence, and I think the court should simply admonish. I'm going to admonish, and communications between a witness and a defendant during the course of the trial I don't think are relevant to anything unless there's something highly unusual. I'm not going to get into that in front of the jury. All right, let's have the jurors, please. Okay, hold on. What did he say, Mr. Darden? What's your offer of proof? He said, tell the truth. I'd object, Your Honor. Mr. Cochran, please. Thank you. All right, let's have the jury, please.
All right, good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies for the delay in getting started again. Uh, however, when you have so many attorneys involved in a case, uh, this, as you will find out, is not their only case that they have. And I allowed one of the attorneys to make a quick appearance in another courtroom in the courthouse. And that attorney was uh, unfortunately delayed. And that was the reason for the uh, longer continuance than I had anticipated. Also, during the course of the last sidebar discussion, it was brought to my attention that there appeared to be some communication or attempted communication between the witness, Mr. Ship, and persons over at the council table. You were instructed to disregard any conduct that you see like that. It is obviously not evidence. I've instructed the witness not to do anything like that uh, in the future, but please disregard anything that you see of that nature. All right, Mr. Douglas, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ship, do you know a woman by the name of Margaret Edwards? Pardon me? Do you know Margaret Edwards? Margaret Edwards? Yes. A friend of my mom's? Yes. Oh, yes, I do. I'm moving on. All right. He's indicated that's the only question he's going to ask overall. Now, Mr. Ship, let's go back to when you had these series of meetings with Ms. Weller about this book. And based on your producing the document that is now listed as Exhibit 1001, the first of those meetings occurred on July 13th, did it not? I think that's correct. Okay. And you say that you had a series of six or seven meetings that followed? Approximately. And each of the meetings occurred at Yamashiro's, a restaurant? Most of them, I think. Um, we may have had one. I think at the uh, bicycle shop okay. on Wilshire Boulevard. When you met at Yamashiro's, you say that you were eating hors d'oeuvres. Yes, so I think sushi or hors d'oeuvres. Or... Were you also drinking? No. Didn't Was drink. she drinking? She had a glass of wine. Now, it is true, is it not, that sometime in 1994, you and Kathy Randa went out to, for a quick bite. Correct? Probably several times. We, we hung out quite a bit. What about the time when you and she hung out and she asked you to stop Objection, dropping? Your Honor, calls for here, sir. Those are your state of mind, Your Honor. All right, let's approach. All right, thank you, Counsel. Mr. Douglas, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Ship, as I was asking before the objection, do you recall an occasion in 1994 when you had a conversation with Kathy Randa and Ms. Randa asked you to stop dropping by Mr. Simpson's home unannounced? Never. 
It didn't occur in April or May of 1994 over lunch? No one has ever asked me to stop dropping by that house. Okay. Let's talk about the nature of your relationship with uh, Mrs. Simpson. You and she met before the Simpsons were married, correct? Correct. And you and she became close, correct? Good friends. Um, in 1989, you said that you spoke to her almost daily at one period of time, true? You mean after the uh, After incident? the incident in 89? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And you continue to um, have conversations with her even after she and Mr. Simpson broke up, correct? Yes, I did. You would have occasions when you would visit her at her home on Gretna Green in Los Angeles, didn't you? Twice. I think I was over there twice. There were other occasions when you'd speak to her on the telephone, correct? Correct. You would speak with her when she moved to the location on Bundy, didn't you? Yes, I did. You considered her a close friend. Yes, I did. During the course of their marriage, you never had an occasion to personally observe any arguments between Mr. and Mrs. Simpson, did None you? None whatsoever. Isn't it true, sir, that you have in the past told Mr. Simpson's friend that if Mr. Simpson weren't around, you might have a shot at Nicole Brown Simpson yourself? No, I did not. You've never said that to any of Mr. Simpson's friends? Excuse me for smiling, but no, I did not. I'm sorry. It is true, though, that you had an occasion to see Mr. Simpson out publicly a week or two before the deaths, didn't you? I sure did. You saw him at a night spot that's called the House of Blues, didn't you? Sure did. He was there with his girlfriend, Paula Barbieri, wasn't he? Correct. They appeared to be happy to you, didn't they? He did. Nothing further. Any redirect? Yes, sir. Mr. Shepard, you've been called just about everything in the book so far, haven't you? Yes, you Sustain. You were subpoenaed to come here and testify, Mr. Shipp? Yes, sir. You didn't get a lawyer to invite that subpoena, did you? Oh, well. well, I got a lawyer first, um, Robert McNeil, but um, I didn't know I didn't fight it. You knew when you received the subpoena that on, on an occasion in your life you had a drinking problem. Oh, correct. Did you tell that to the defendant? That I had a drinking problem? Yeah. I think I may have told Kathy Randa, and I think he, I think he knew. Okay. And did you ever tell the defendant that you were suspended from the department for some days? Oh, no. I, I don't think I told him that. But you knew that, right? Oh, yeah. And you knew Mr. Cochran was Mr. Uh, Simpson's attorney, right? That's correct. You knew they'd find out about that, didn't you? Sustain. You filed a stress claim and went out on stress at some point during your career with the LAPD? That's right around the time when I had the, uh, the incident, my one and only incident on the LAPD. Okay. What, what brought about that incident? Um, I was just burned out being a cop. I was unhappy. And um, I, I guess I was just partying quite a bit. And when you went to see Kathy Randa uh, one night and beat on her door around 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, what brought about that incident? I had had some drinks, and I know Kathy was taking this real hard, and I, I felt really bad. And I wanted to go by there and just talk to her. And, and Kathy was the type of person, because Kathy also has had a drinking problem. And at times, we used to reinforce each other. And she hadn't had any drinks that I recall during this whole time. 
that I recall. And I think I kind of went by there to go, hey, Kathy, whoops, here I am. Were there other occasions during the, during the time that you've known Kathy Randa in which you went to her house late at night? Yeah, I, I, I used to, once again, here I was on patrol. I worked in North Hollywood Division, and she had problems with people, and I would go by there and, and check on her, and if I was off, I'd call other officers and say, would you go check on Kathy Randa? Because she had a problem with some drug people down the street. They were hanging out, her and her neighbors, and I had a friend of mine, a sergeant, go down there, or he was, he was trying to meet with her. And were there occasions when Kathy Randall would call you late at night and ask you to come over and help her with her drinking problem? Well, Kathy, now she wouldn't really call me late at night, but there were times when she had her own problems where she had to take leave from Mr. Simpson's office. Oh, this is, well, she had her own problems, we had to take leave, and we were basically, Kathy and I at one time, of course until the, we were, we were very close, Wait. we reinforced each other. I'm sorry. Overruled. Angela Stan. Now, whatever the problem was that Kathy Randall had, you know that problem, you know what that problem is. Correct. You see any need to tell the whole world what that problem is? Not at all. It's between you and she, isn't it? It's between me and her. You had a drinking problem and the defendant knew that? Yes, yes he did. But you were still his friend? Sure, of course. He, ex he accepted you as his friend <laughs> nevertheless, correct? Objection, Your Honor, that's leading to <coughs> speculation. And I think that's a conclusion that he can call, overrule. He accepted you as his friend, even though you had a drinking problem. Is that right? I got drunk at OJ's wedding and made a fool out of myself. And he accepted me and thought it was a joke later on. And you were good friends with the defendant, right? Uh, yes, I was. Who arranged the security? for Nicole Brown's funeral. I did. I was contacted by Kathy and I called a friend of mine okay. who actually did the security. I mean, I, I didn't do it, but I called him, made the contact. Did you attend the, the, uh, the services at the church? Yes, I did. Not everyone was allowed admittance to those services, were they? Oh, no, they weren't. Were you admitted into those services? Oh, yes, I was. The defendant was there, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He didn't stop you from entering those funeral services for Nicole Brown, did he? No, he did not. You attended the defendant's wedding reception? Yes, I did. You discussed uh, his problems, uh, the problems he was having with Nicole when, when he beat her up in 1989? Is that right? Yes, I did. Those are the kinds of things that friends do, correct? That's correct. Sustain. Stricken. Jury disrepaired. Yesterday, Mr. Douglas asked you if you'd ever had a meal with the defendant. You recall that? Yes, I did. Had you ever had a meal with the defendant in public? Not prior to the, not prior to the, um, the 89 incident, just him and I know. Did you have any meals in public with him after the 89 incident? Yes, I did. And when was that? When was the last time? Um, I had a meal with him on the set of Naked Gun Two and a Half in front of everybody. Were you scheduled to have lunch with the defendant on June 3rd, 1994? I thought it was a dinner, but I guess if, if it was lunch, I do remember, yeah, we were scheduled. Yeah, I have here what 
that there should be a Xerox copy of the defendant's personal balance. And as we mark the next in evidence, I believe that would be the people's money. I will. I would object, Your Honor, if this were presented by to this witness with this document. All right, Slate. Proceeding with Jackson County with the first of the court for statement. All right, that item will be, however, marked People's 11. Excuse me, 12. The defendant's calendar is marked People's 12, Your Honor? Correct. Okay. Mr. Shipp, did you indicate a moment ago that, that you couldn't recall if it was a lunch or a dinner that you were That's supposed to have with the defendant? I, th I thought it was more of a dinner. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection if you looked at the defendant's personal calendar? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Told us that you uh, are somewhat of an actor. Is that correct? That's correct. And are you acting today? I do a little extra stuff here every now and then. Okay. So you do you do uh, you do get some roles from time to time? Yeah, I work with Idell. I'm registered with Idell James, and um, she gets me out every now and then. Okay. Well, what about your presence here today on the witness stand and your testimony yesterday? Were you just acting here in court today and yesterday? I'm not that good. <laughs> Mr. Douglas suggested that you might be attempting to enhance your uh, public profile. You recall that yesterday? Yes, I did. Have you been contacted by hard copy? No. Have you been contacted by some of the tabloid television shows? Yes, I have. Which ones, if you recall? Uh, current Affair. Okay. Have you been contacted by the news media? Yes, I have. Do you recall which media entities? Two, four, uh, two, seven, two and seven. <laughs> Have you been contacted by some of the paper tabloids? None. Have you contacted the tabloids? No. Have you contacted the news media? No, I have not. Have you offered to, to give anyone an interview relative to your information or your knowledge surrounding this case? No, I have not. You understand, sir, that you can make money doing that? This is true. You can get your picture in the paper and on television doing that. 
world. Is that correct? That's correct. You're not a rich man, I take it. Pardon me? Are you rich? No. I, I work for a property management company. I'm very happy working there. Well, why didn't you pursue some of these other directions? You know, one of these directions where you might uh, provide the information you gave us here in court today and, and get paid a, a hefty sum. I personally felt that was blood money. I, would, I didn't want any part of it. Except for the money that went to Justin and, and uh, Jason, uh, Justin and Sydney. And the money that went to Justin and Sydney is the money that went directly to them from Sheila Weller. Part of the book. Sustain. Rephrase the question. What money are you referring to? Whatever donations that are coming from that book, the sale of that book. And who do you uh, expect those donations to go to? To Sydney and Justin. The defendant's children. The defendant's children. How much of that money went to you? Not a dime. How much is going to go to you? None. Have you obtained any monetary gain at all as a result of the information and knowledge you have relative to this case? Not so ever. You told Mr. Douglas yesterday that you brought approximately 40 police officers to, to Rockingham. Is that correct? That's correct. Did the defendant ever have any arguments or disagreements uh, with any of those 40 police officers? Never. O.J. loved them. Did they appear to feel the same way about the defendant? Yes, you know, Sustained. Did any police officer ever tell you that they didn't like the defendant? Yes, Sustained. Did the defendant ever reject any of those police officers off his property? No. Did he ever ask him to leave? No. And did those police officers make a request of the defendant? Did they ask him for things? Yes, you Sustained. Did the defendant give those police officers anything? Not all of them, but a few of them autographed pictures at my request. And do those officers appear to appreciate that? Overruled. He was there. He can testify to that. Yes, they did. Did you ever obtain the defendant's autograph? One of the things, being around OJ and Nicole, Jackson, I never, I never asked him. Jackson, Overruled. He's saying he never something. If he could finish the answer, please. I never asked OJ and Nicole for anything. Nothing. And to this very day, I do not have an autographed picture of O.J. Simpson. I ask for pictures for friends of mine and kids, never for myself. My kids don't have an autographed picture. My wife, I don't have one. Mr. Judge. Did you ever ask the defendant to help you along in your acting career? Never. Once again, I say I never asked him for anything. Did he ever help you? In any way, in terms of your acting career? Yes, he did. Out of the blue, I get a call from. Overall. <laughs> I get a call from Kushner and Locke out of the blue saying, come down here and pick up a script. So I thought it was some little tiny little extra part, and I get down there, and it's a police part. Next and question. I, okay. And who arranged for that police part for you? OJ did. Please. Did you ever discuss the manner in which you obtained that police part with the defendant? Later on, I said, hey, thanks, OJ. And what did he say? He played it off. He was like, hey, no big deal. I got to take my son, Dio, down, and he hung out with Lawrence Taylor. It was, it was a great day. That was, that's his hero. And these are the things friends do for friends, aren't they? That's correct. Sustain. The defendant and Mr. Ship are depicted in each of these photographs. May they be marked you people's? Sure. Okay. 
Mark 13, 14, and 15, and I will hand them to defense counsel. 13, 14, and 15. 